Welcome back to the Accessible Art History YouTube channel. For today's video, we are going to be comparing two works on the same subject, Judith Slang Holofernes. Both of these pieces were painted by Baroque masters, Caravaggio and Artemis Magenileschi. Although they chose to depict the same story, each used their own unique worldview and beliefs to put a personal touch on it. One quick note before we get started. There will be a small portion of this video discussing assault. We wanted to let you know ahead of time as a trigger warning. Before we analyze the paintings, it is important to know the story they depict. The story of Judith comes from the Deuterocanonical Book of Judith. A Deuterocanonical book is one that is not found in the Protestant Old Testament, but is found in various other versions of this part of the Bible. Judith was a beautiful widow in the Jewish town of Bethulia. It was under siege by the Assyrian army led by the general Holofernes. The Jewish forces were much smaller and it looked like they were going to lose, but Judith wasn't going to let that happen. Knowing that Holofernes desired her, she snuck into his tent one night. After he passed out from drinking, Judith decapitated him. This action was gruesome, but it saved her people. Judith is considered a heroine and is one of the few women named in the Bible. Michelangelo Merci de Caravaggio, who is known by his last name to history, was born in 1571 in Milan. He was active in the 1590s through the early part of the 17th century. Caravaggio is considered to be one of the most important Baroque artists in history. He painted from life, working hard to capture the physical and emotional aspects of his subject. Another thing he is famous for is his extreme use of chiaroscuro, called tenebrism. This contrast of light and dark added yet another layer of drama to his works. Caravaggio led quite an insane life. He was known for his bad temper and frequent brawls. In 1606, one of these fights got out of control and Caravaggio ended up killing his opponent. Fearing for his own life, he fled to Naples where he was able to establish himself once again. But Caravaggio couldn't escape from his own violent tendencies. He continued to fight and one of them left him disfigured. In 1610, Caravaggio died. It was under mysterious circumstances. Was it a fever? Was he murdered? Perhaps it was poison. Artemisma Genileschi was born in 1593. She was a daughter of another well-known artist, Orazio Genileschi. Although she had brothers, her father was impressed by early signs of her talent and allowed her to train in his workshop. Caravaggio was a family friend, and his style influenced both Artemisma and her father. She flourished as an artist, and her talent was recognized, which is quite unusual for this time period. In fact, she was the first female elected to the prestigious Accademia di Bella Arte di Firenze, or the Academy of Beautiful Art of Florence. Her use of tenebrism and emotion still strikes a chord with viewers centuries later. A tragic event, unfortunately, informs Artemisma's art. She was sexually assaulted by a fellow artist and friend of the family, Augustino Tassi. Eventually, he was brought to trial, but Artemisma was tortured by the courts in order to verify her story. She used this pain and suffering as inspiration for her art. Artemisma is most famous for painting women in terrible situations, but still finding their strength. Now that we have discussed the artists, it is time to examine their work. First, let's go over Caravaggio's version of Judith's story. He painted it between 1598 and 1599. There is no denying that he is the artist. The painting has the extreme contrast of light and shadow that viewers have come to expect from him. He also paints the most dramatic and emotional part of the story, Holofernes's decapitation. The general looks up in horror as an almost hesitant Judith swings a sword and her maid cheers her on. Genileschi painted her version of this story between 1616 and 1618, about 20 years after Caravaggio did. She takes the tenebrism even further than he did. The background is dark, almost inky black. The decapitation is nearly complete. Judith confidently swings her sword through Holofernes' neck. Her maid is engaged in the action, holding the general down as blood gushes forth. Keeping with Baroque sensibilities, both artists chose to depict the most emotional and dramatic moment of the story. It provided them with the opportunity to capture the high stakes elements. If Judith fails in her mission, then her town would be destroyed. Another way these paintings are similar is the artist's use of tenebrism. The contrast of light and dark was first used in the Renaissance to create a three-dimensional space. However, Baroque artists took it to an extreme and used it to add drama to the scene. The viewer almost had to squint to view certain details, pulling them further into the painting. Finally, Caravaggio and Genileschi painted their figures in a similar composition. 
Holofernes is stretched out on a bed to the left side. Judith with her sword is painted on the right. This is a classic composition for good versus evil story. Left has long been regarded as evil. In fact, the Latin word for left is the base for the English word sinister. By putting the general on this side, the artists were indicating to their audience that he was bad news. Despite both of these paintings being from the Baroque period, there are some differences. First of all, the emotions are more restrained in Caravaggio's piece. Judith is almost hesitant at her task, leaning away from Holofernes. But in Genaleski's painting, Judith is confident. She knows what she has to do and commits to it. Another contrasting element is the amount of gore in each painting. Genaleski didn't shy away from blood. It flows freely, almost gushing forth from the general's nearly severed head. Caravaggio, on the other hand, treats the blood as an afterthought. It's a static red line in his work. The story of Judith and Holofernes is a harrowing tale, and both Caravaggio and Genaleski brought it to life. By using their Baroque ideals, including tenebrism and emotion, viewers are shown that sometimes all it takes is one person to change the tide. Thank you.